Have you ever wondered how our brain processes information and helps us learn? Well, that's where the fascinating world of cognitive learning theory comes in. This theory, which had its origins in the mid 20th century, is like a roadmap of the mind, guiding us through the intricate pathways of learning. The cognitive learning theory is a psychological framework that attempts to explain how we, as humans, process information and acquire knowledge. It's not just about absorbing facts or mastering skills, but rather, it's about understanding how our brains work when we're engaged in the process of learning. Imagine for a moment, the brain as a complex computer, continuously processing, storing, and retrieving information. Cognitive learning theory is the software, the operating system that governs how this computer operates. It's the set of rules and processes that dictate how we take in new information, how we interpret and understand it, and ultimately, how we utilize it. This theory has evolved and grown over the years, becoming one of the leading learning theories in today's world. It's used in a variety of fields, from education and psychology to business and technology, helping to shape how we teach, learn, and even how we design our technologies. But what makes cognitive learning theory truly remarkable is its focus on the active role of the learner. It's not just about what we're learning, it's about how we're learning. It emphasizes the importance of mental processes like perception, memory, and problem solving, giving us a deeper understanding of how we learn, and more importantly, how we can improve the way we learn. So, if you've ever been curious about how we learn, buckle up because we are about to take a deep dive into the cognitive learning theory. Let's explore the fascinating world of cognitive learning and discover how this theory can help us unlock the full potential of our minds. Uh, at its core, cognitive learning theory revolves around a few key concepts. Firstly, let's delve into the concept of cognitive load. This refers to the amount of mental effort being used in the working memory. In simpler terms, it's essentially the brain's bandwidth. Much like a computer, the human brain has a limit to the amount of information it can process at one time. When the cognitive load is too high, learning becomes less effective, as the brain is too busy juggling information to actually absorb it. This is why breaking down complex information into more digestible chunks can enhance learning. The second core concept of cognitive learning theory is schemas. A schema in the cognitive world is a mental framework that organizes and interprets information. It's like a mental map or a blueprint that guides us in understanding the world around us. Schemas are built from our experiences and they help us predict the outcome of similar situations based on our past experiences. For instance, if you've ever played a sport, you have a schema for how to play that sport. You know the rules, understand the strategies, and anticipate the outcomes of certain actions. Now the interesting part is that these schemas are not static. They are dynamic and constantly evolving as we learn and experience more. This is where the concept of assimilation and accommodation comes in. Assimilation is when we fit new information into our existing schemas, while accommodation is when we change our existing schemas to accommodate new information. It's a bit like adding new books to a shelf or sometimes rearranging the entire shelf to make room for a larger book. The third core concept is automaticity. This is the ability to do things without occupying the mind with the low-level details required. It's usually the result of learning, repetition, and practice. Remember when you first learned to drive? Each action required conscious thought. But with practice, driving becomes automatic. This is automaticity in action. So, how do these concepts interrelate? Well, schemas and automaticity work together to reduce cognitive load. As we develop more complex schemas through learning and practice, we become more automatic in our responses. This frees up our cognitive resources to tackle new or more complex tasks. It's a bit like upgrading the RAM in your computer to handle more demanding applications. Understanding these core concepts is the first step in understanding cognitive learning theory. As we proceed further, we'll delve deeper into the fascinating world of cognitive learning, exploring the role of memory, the importance of motivation and emotion, and various learning strategies. But for now, let's take a moment to appreciate the intricate workings of our mind and how these core concepts play a pivotal role in our learning journey. Memory plays a crucial part in cognitive learning, but how exactly does it work? Imagine your memory as a vast library where information is stored and retrieved. In this library, there are two main sections, short-term memory and long-term memory. Short-term memory, also known as working memory, is like the reading table. It's where you temporarily hold and process information. However, this table only has limited space. In fact, on average, it can only hold about seven items for less than a minute. 
Now the goal of learning is to move this information from the cluttered reading table to the orderly shelves of the long-term memory. This is where information is stored indefinitely for future retrieval. But how does this transition occur? That's where a process called encoding comes into play. Encoding transforms information into a form that the brain can understand and store. This process is greatly enhanced by paying attention and actively engaging with the material, but it's not enough to just store information in long-term memory. We also need to efficiently retrieve it when needed. This is where retrieval practice comes in. Retrieval practice involves recalling information from memory, which strengthens and enhances long-term retention. It's like regularly dusting off the books in your library, ensuring that they're always ready for use. So, when you're studying or learning something new, don't just passively read or listen. Actively engage with the material, ask questions, discuss it, apply it, make it meaningful to you. This will help encode the information into your long-term memory. Then practice retrieval. Test yourself. Try to recall the information without looking at your notes. This not only strengthens your memory, but also helps you understand what you know and what you don't. It's a kind of self-feedback mechanism that guides your learning. And that's how our memory aids us in learning new things every day. Beyond memory, motivation and emotion also play significant roles in our learning process. Let's delve into this fascinating aspect of cognitive learning theory. Motivation is the fuel that drives our desire to learn, to understand, to explore. It's what gets us up in the morning, eager to face new challenges. Motivation is that inner spark that pushes us to persevere, even when the going gets tough. It's that internal drive that propels us to put in the effort, the time, and the energy required to absorb and internalize new information. Without motivation, learning can become an uphill battle, a chore rather than an exciting journey of discovery. Now let's talk about emotion. Emotions, those powerful feelings that color our world, are inextricably linked to our learning process. They can either enhance or hinder our ability to learn. Positive emotions like joy, curiosity, and excitement can make learning a rewarding and fulfilling experience. They can boost our focus, enhance our memory, and foster creativity. On the flip side, negative emotions like fear, anxiety, and boredom can be detrimental to our learning. They can cloud our thinking, hinder our concentration, and stifle our creativity. Just imagine trying to study for an exam while feeling stressed or anxious. It's like trying to drive a car with the handbrake on. It's possible, but it's exceedingly difficult and inefficient. In contrast, imagine studying while feeling curious and excited. It's like driving on a smooth highway with the wind in your hair. It's efficient, enjoyable, and you're likely to cover a lot more ground. So it's clear that motivation and emotion are not just peripheral aspects of learning. Rather, they are central to the process, influencing our ability to absorb, process, and retain information. They shape our learning experience and impact our academic achievement. So the next time you're studying, remember that your mood and motivation can significantly affect your learning. Now that we've unraveled the basics of cognitive learning theory, how can we apply it? Let's dive into the heart of the matter, cognitive learning strategies. These strategies are the tools that help us to process, store, and retrieve information more efficiently. We'll explore three key strategies, spaced repetition, interleaving, and elaboration. First up is spaced repetition. This strategy is all about breaking your study sessions into smaller, more manageable chunks and spreading them out over time. Instead of cramming all the information in one go, you take breaks allowing your brain to absorb and consolidate the knowledge. Think of it like watering a plant. Rather than flooding it once, you sprinkle water consistently to ensure it grows healthily. Next, we have interleaving. This is the practice of mixing up different types of problems or topics within a single study session. It's like making a study salad, where you toss in different ingredients to keep it interesting and balanced. This method encourages the brain to discriminate between different types of information, promoting deeper understanding and better recall. Lastly, we have elaboration. This strategy involves explaining the concepts you're learning in your own words and connecting them to what you already know. Imagine you're a detective making connections between clues to solve a case. Elaboration helps you weave a web of understanding, linking new information to existing knowledge. So how can we use these strategies in everyday learning and teaching? Let's imagine you're a teacher preparing a lesson plan. You could start by introducing a concept through a lecture or a reading assignment. Then, instead of moving on to the next topic immediately, you could revisit the same concept in the next class, applying the principle of spaced repetition. For interleaving, you might design your lesson plan to include different topics or types of problems within the same session. This could mean discussing the Pythagorean theorem, 
then shifting to a discussion on similar triangles, before circling back to Pythagorean theorem problems. This keeps the students' minds agile, encouraging them to switch gears and understand the nuances of each concept. As for elaboration, you can encourage students to explain concepts in their own words, perhaps in a group discussion or a reflection essay. This not only fosters deeper understanding but also promotes active participation in the learning process. Remember, these strategies are not exclusive to formal learning environments. They can be used by anyone, anywhere, to master any subject. Whether you're learning a new language, studying for an exam, or trying to remember a recipe, these cognitive learning strategies can make the process more efficient and enjoyable. With these strategies in your arsenal, mastering any subject becomes a much more achievable goal. To wrap up, let's summarize what we've learned about cognitive learning theory. In the fascinating world of cognitive learning, we've traversed through its core concepts, bringing to light the intricate workings of the human mind in the learning process. We've discovered that cognitive learning is not merely about absorbing information, but about understanding, processing, and applying it. It's a complex, intricate dance of cognition where knowledge is not just received, but actively constructed. Navigating further, we explored the integral role memory plays in cognitive learning. Memory isn't merely a storage unit for facts and figures. Rather, it's a dynamic system that organizes, stores, and retrieves information, forging connections between new and existing knowledge. It's the foundation of learning, where experiences transform into knowledge. Then, we delved into the crucial impact of motivation and emotion in cognitive learning, revealing that these elements are not peripheral, but central to the learning process. Motivation propels us forward, igniting the spark of curiosity and the desire to learn. Emotions, on the other hand, color our learning experiences, influencing how we perceive, process, and remember information. They are the driving forces that energize and direct learning. Lastly, we examined various cognitive learning strategies and their applications, demonstrating how these tools can enhance our learning experiences. From metacognition and problem solving to concept mapping and mnemonic devices, these strategies empower learners to take control of their learning, fostering deeper understanding and long-term retention. So, from the intricate dance of cognition to the dynamic role of memory, the driving forces of motivation and emotion, and the empowering cognitive learning strategies, we've taken an enlightening journey through cognitive learning theory. And there you have it, a comprehensive understanding of cognitive learning theory, a fascinating insight into our learning process.